blood sugar levels steady, right? All right, now if you're not eating food and there's nothing for your body to convert into blood sugar, then the blood sugar levels drop, okay? Now, um, I will tell you that each time you eat a meal, and this is important, important to understand, each time you eat a meal, you provide your body with approximately three and a half to four hours, three and a half to four hours of blood sugar maintenance each time you eat. And at that point in time, after that three and a half to four hours, your blood sugar levels start to drop. So here's what happens. At some point in time, you've eaten, your blood sugar levels are maintained. After three and a half to four hours, your blood sugar levels start to drop. Now, what is the easiest thing to do to bring those blood sugar levels back up? Eat something, right? Okay. But people don't do that. You know why? Because they want to lose weight. I'm trying to lose weight. So I'm going to skip some meals. I'm going to cut out a few meals. Why? I'm trying to lose weight. So here's what happens. Three and a half, four hours go by. Blood sugar levels start to drop. As the blood sugar levels start to drop, now remember the body monitors that blood sugar 24 hours a day. As the blood sugar levels start to drop, your body senses it, sets off a low blood sugar alarm. Bells and whistles are going off. Low blood sugar, we gotta do something. Well, easiest thing to do is eat. We've already talked about that. But no one does that because they want to lose weight. So they don't eat. So the blood sugar level continues to drop. Now, understand what happens next because this is going to play a large part in the reason that people store body fat. Okay? The blood sugar level drops. Your body's setting off alarms, but you're not eating. You want to lose weight. So the blood sugar continues to drop. Well, as that blood sugar continues to drop, your body senses it and it says to itself, well, if the blood sugar is going down and I'm not getting any food, that means I'm entering a state of starvation. You might know that you're going to go eat in an hour or two, but your body doesn't work that way. It's programmed genetically to react certain ways. So when the blood sugar goes low, your body thinks it is now starving. Now, if your body thinks it is starving, meaning it's going to have to keep itself alive without food, it has to take precautionary measures in order to sustain itself like that. If a person is starving to death, would they live longer with a fast or a slow metabolism? Slow. slow. Burns the energy slow. They can live longer. So when your body thinks it is starving, first thing it does is slows down your metabolism. Of course, we want faster metabolisms. But if you let your body think it is starving, first thing it does is it starts to slow down that metabolism to keep you alive longer. All right? Now, is that a good thing? No. Not unless you're really starving. Otherwise, that's a bad thing because we want faster metabolisms to burn more body fat. So when we're going periods of time without eating, we are slowing down our metabolism meaning we're going to store more body fat. But that's not the worst part. The worst part is what happens next. Your blood sugar continues to drop. Your body thinks it is starving. And it's already slowing down the metabolism. And then your body sends a signal to your pancreas. Everybody familiar with the pancreas? What does the pancreas produce? Insulin. Everybody's heard of insulin. People take it who are diabetics, right? right? For our purposes this morning, the diabetic thing is not important. Because insulin is it's the most powerful hormone in your body, and it, it serves probably a thousand different purposes. For our purposes this morning, when your body sends that signal to the pancreas, and the pancreas starts producing excessive quantities of insulin. The insulin fills your blood vessels and travels throughout your body. 
Your body thinks it's starving, it's producing all this extra insulin. The insulin travels throughout your body to all the places that you store body fat. Your tummy and your thighs and your hips. It goes to all the places you store body fat and the insulin surrounds that body fat. It wraps it up, it protects it, it preserves it, it insulates it. The insulin insulates your body fat. And once that insulin is protecting your body fat, guess what? That body fat is off limits. You can no longer burn it up. You might want to, but you can't. Because that insulin's powerful stuff. So the blood sugar drops slow, your body slows down the metabolism, sends a signal to the pancreas to start producing insulin. The insulin then puts your body in what we will call an insulated state. And in this insulated state, you cannot access and burn body fat. All right, now, having said all that, let's consider an example. Somebody gets up in the morning and says to themselves, I think I want to lose some weight. So I'm going to skip breakfast. Because that's my number one strategy to lose weight, so I'm going to skip a meal. Who here has ever skipped a breakfast? Nobody. <laughs> All right. So maybe have a glass of water or maybe a little coffee, but no food. You're going to skip breakfast. Trying to lose weight. And then get to the whole morning without eating anything, and then it's lunchtime. Lunchtime, have a salad and a Diet Coke. Trying to lose weight. And then work until 5 o'clock. Okay? 5 o'clock, getting off of work, feeling tired, feeling no energy. There's no calories in your system. Feeling no energy. Boy, I should go home and get something to eat. But I'm trying to lose weight. So I'm going to go to the gym and do two hours on the treadmill. So this person comes to the gym gets on a treadmill, and starts working, going at it. And it tells them right there on the thing how many calories they're burning. If this person had nothing to eat for breakfast, had a salad and a Diet Coke for lunch, got off of work at 5 and came to the gym, how low was their blood sugar by the time they arrived at the gym? Abysmally low, right. Not just in the gutter, it was below the gutter. And so then they got on the treadmill and started exercising and burning up 1,500 calories. Now here's my question. When they burned up those 1,500 calories, what exactly were they burning? They want to believe that they're burning up body fat. However, that is not the case. Since we know that that insulin is powerful stuff, and with the blood sugar that low and the body in an insulated state, the body fat is not accessible, so when the body needs calories to burn while it's on that treadmill working and it can't get to the body fat, it's going to burn the next available thing, and guess what? That's muscle tissue. So this person came to the gym, worked out for two hours, and burned up a bunch of muscle tissue. Is that good? So tell me this. If that person had not come to the gym at all and just gone home, would they have been better off? Yes. Yeah. Hell yes. <laughs> All right. And it, and it pains me to see people come to the gym, work their asses off on those machines, knowing they're making themselves worse. They're burning up muscle tissue, reducing their muscle mass, reducing their ability to then burn calories, decreasing their metabolisms, and then when they go eat, they're going to put that back on his body. Fat. So this person then goes home and says, well, you know, I skipped breakfast. And I had a salad and Diet Coke for lunch, and then I worked hard for two hours, I'm entitled to a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Who's done that? Don't no, raise your hands. It's okay. It's okay. Anytime, anytime you allow your blood sugar to go low, your body is insulating every body storage fat, every body fat location in your body, which includes your tummy. And look, let's not kid ourselves. Genetics do play a role in how people store body fat. 
Some people store more in their tummies, some store more in their hips, whatever. With you, the tummy is, is one of your problem spots, okay? So you would probably lose body fat from other places first.